Welcome to part one, a series on drawing a dog portrait, beginning with the eyes and nose. I've already transferred my image to my UART sanded paper, so I want to start out by drawing around the outlines of the dog's ears and face. I am using a caramel color brown to do the outlining. The fur of this dog is a very light brown, so I don't want to start out too dark. After outlining some of the features of the dog, I am applying a base layer of color to my pastel paper. I want to block in some of the values of, and colors of the dog's face before I begin developing the dog's eyes. I am beginning to add some contours to the shape of the dog's face by blocking in some of the base colors. I've used a little bit more pressure uh, above the eyebrows where the shading will be a little bit of a darker value. Once I've added enough shading with this darker shade of pastel, I will switch to a very light beige for the center of the bridge of the dog's muzzle area. The first pastel layer is the foundation and once we have a sufficient layer of color for this foundation we will be able to have a smoother surface to add more layers of color over. It's important to have a strong base before adding any fine details to the portrait. So now I will blend this area with one of my sponge applicators to help push some of this color pigment into the grain of the paper. The UART sanded paper will hold several layers of pastel if applied lightly and not too heavily. I am blending my pastel with a sponge applicator. You can purchase the sponge applicator tools on Amazon or art stores. They're commonly sold with pan pastels. But it's important to blend the first layer of your base foundation to push some of that pastel pigment into the grain of the paper. I have switched to a medium gray to begin shading and shaping some of the contours of the dog's muzzle. The fur around the dog's eyes and forehead and the sides of the dog's face is a little bit of a darker shade. So I'm switching to a light brown that is more of a taupe brown to shade these areas. This will help bring out the shape of the muzzle area.
So now I will blend this area with my sponge applicator. The sponge applicator is clean on the side that I'm blending with. It's nice to use these sponge applicators and remove them when you need to and flip it around to the clean side or remove them all together and replace them with a new one. I am switching to a darker gray to again shade some of the areas around the muzzle to help define the shape. The middle area of the muzzle is of a very light value, so I don't want to apply too dark of a shadow here. I will be able to blend lighter shades over the gray to create the realistic fur. I will blend this area a little bit just using my finger. Now that we have a couple layers of pastel, the surface is much smoother and blends very nicely, even with just my fingertip. Now that I have a base layer of color, I'm going to begin developing the dog's eyes. I'm using my black pastel pencil to outline the eyes and first I want to establish the shape of the dog's eyes before adding any shades of color. I am outlining the dog's eye very lightly with my black pastel and if I should make a mistake it's easily erased at this stage. I want to outline the dog's eyelids uh, at the top and bottom of the eye and create a little bit of shading in the corner. Once I have applied the, the lid outline, I will come back with a blending tool that has a rubber tip to smooth out the edges of these outlines. I'm going to continue with just the black pastel to begin shaping the pupil of the dog's eye. And I'm careful not to fill in the area where some of the highlight reflections are on the surface of the pupil. Now I will repeat the same process on the dog's left eye by outlining the shape of the eye and then the eyelids and coming back to the center pupil. I'm 
The little dog is one of two dogs that is part of this group portrait. But for this demonstration, I'm only going to focus on the dog in the back to show you how to draw the dog's eyes and nose. My photo reference was of poor quality to work from and I'll bring it up here to show you quickly the, the image and I don't recommend it working from a poor resolution photograph because you lose a lot of detail. So I had to uh, use my imagination a little bit to complete the details of the dog portrait. So now that I've finished outlining with the black pastel on both eyes, I will use a rubber tip blending stick to blend the outlines of the dog's eyes and pupil areas. I really like using these rubber tip applicators because when they blend they blend the color very smooth and push the color into the paper rather than the white paper stumps which typically blend but remove some of the color from the surface. So I really do recommend using one of these for this type of detailed work. Once I finish outlining and blending the eyes the color will be stable and won't smudge off the paper as I wipe over it because it's been pushed into the grain of the paper. I am using my dark brown to fill in the color of the iris around the pupils. I'm going to switch to a light brown to blend some of the dark brown and light brown together in the iris. I will use my rubber tip blending tool to blend this color in the dog's eyes. After blending, I'm going to reestablish some of the dark value around the circumference of the eyes. I am switching to a dark blue to add a little bit of color to the dog's pupils. 
I won't cover the entire pupil with the dark blue, but beneath some of the highlighted areas and around the base of the pupil. I would like to add some more brown to the saturation and color of the dog's eyes around the top section of the eyes where there is a little more of a cast shadow. I would like to add some more reflection to the dog's eyes, so I'm going to use my light blue to create this shadow of light. There is a small band of light reflection created along the curvature of the eye. The eyes also reflect the surrounding colors and bring interest to the eyes. I'm going to begin shading with my darker brown around the eyes to create the darker fur that surrounds the dog's eyes. The shading around the dog's eyes will help bring the eyes forward and give the illusion of greater depth and form. I'm going to switch to a sienna color to add some more color to the uh, facial fur around the eyes and muzzle area. I'm going to shade around and above the dog's brow area. The brow will be the lightest value so I am going to use the Sienna color to shade around the brows. You can begin to see the development of the facial structure.
I'm going to begin blending the fur area around the dog's eyes using my finger and a sponge applicator with a very pointy tip on it which makes it very easy to get close to the dog's eyes. I am going to reapply some of the dark brown along the eyelid and the corner of the eyes. I think I had rubbed off a little bit as I was blending, so I'm just touching it up again. I want to touch up a little bit of the white highlights around the corner of the dog's eyes and it'll add a little more sparkle to the dog's eyes. The light source does penetrate the eyes of the dog a little bit so I want to lighten some of the values where light is bouncing off the dog's eyes. And just a little bit of blending will complete the dog's eyes. And just a little bit of touch up around the eyes and the eyes will be done. Now that the eyes are coming to life and we have some shading around the eyes, I'm going to move on to begin the nose structure. I am going to outline the dog's nose first with my black pastel. I will shape the entire nose and place the nostril positions before I add any real shading to the dog's nose. I am going to outline the dog's mouth 
and the lower chin area of his muzzle. I'm going to add a color of raw umber to the dog's nose as a base color. I'm going to try to match the color of the dog's nose the best I can. And this color seems to have a little bit of a pinkish blend to it. So I'm going to come back with my brown pastel pencil and this will make the color a little richer in value. I'm going to use my brown to shade and bring some shape to the dog's nose and try to form the round shapes around the dog's nostrils. So now I'm going to blend these colors with my rubber tipped blending tool. And I think the color and the shading is working very well. I'm going to come back with my black pastel pencil to begin defining the darker values uh, a little darker and begin to shape the inner nostrils with a little more definition and add some darker shading to some of the curved areas in the lower part of the dog's nose. There is a black line coming up the middle of the dog's nose that defines and separates both sides of the dog's nose. It's important to pay attention to your reference photo to determine exactly where the highlights are reflecting off the surface of the nose, the areas that are exposed most to the light source will reflect some highlights in varying degrees.
I'm going to switch to a raw sienna color that will have a little bit of a rosier color to add some color to the dog's nose. I am going to add a little bit of a lighter shade of gray to indicate some of the highlighted areas in the dog's nose. I want to have a good saturation of color in the dog's nose, so I am coming back with my darker shade of brown to add some more darker values to his nose. We want to keep the edges of the structure of the nose very soft. Make sure to create transitions between the values, especially inside the dog's nostrils. There is a small patch of fur just above the top of the dog's nose that extends lightly up into the uh, muzzle area. I am using my paper stump to help smooth out the highlights on the top of the dog's nose. I'd like to begin developing the muzzle area a little bit more. I am going to use a dark gray to begin shaping and contouring his muzzle. The muzzle area is becoming more defined as I shade along the sides of the muzzle. The long and narrow shape of the muzzle area is also defined by the lighter color inside the bridge of the muzzle and nose area.
I'm going to add some darker brown shading to the dog's forehead and along the temple areas just above the eyebrows. The darker shading will emphasize the contours and the structure of the dog's face. Now I can blend this area a little bit just using my fingertip to create a very smooth transition between the different levels and textures of the fur. So this completes our initial rendering of the dog's eyes and nose with this dog portrait. Be sure to join me next time in part two as I complete the fur details in the dog's face and ears in this series. So I hope you have enjoyed part one on how to draw expressive realistic dog eyes and the dog's nose thank you for joining and see you next time if you haven't subscribed please do and don't forget to press the like button thank you